back. Very many thanks for choosing to stay with us. And in case you're just joining us, welcome to Kenya's Gold. Now, when you see us in this sitting, you know the drill. It is time for the gold conversation with the purpose of understanding a lot more on green energy solutions. And to help us with that conversation, we are honored to have Mr. Collins Odhiambo Ondiek, Secretary General, Biogas Stakeholders Network. Karibu sana, and thank you very much for making time. Now, jumping straight yes. into the conversation when we are talking about green energy solutions what are we talking about and what is the difference between green energy solutions and renewable energy solutions uh, typically green energy solutions are uh, solutions that are uh, uh, providing energy without affecting the environment so it is actually one name for one particular thing oh, so yes. generally when we talk about renewable energy we are talking about green energy solutions mm -hmm. okay. sasa umezungumza hapo ukasema green energy kuna mtu anajiuliza tukisema hivyo ina maanisha nini now when we talk about uh, green energy solutions we are talking about uh, solutions that are uh, able to meet your energy needs without affecting the environment in the long run <laughs> or being depleted with the time. Mm -hmm. uh, this, for example, we are talking about uh, biogas, we are talking about solar, we are talking about hydro, we are talking about all the renewable energies which do not really have to be depleted with the time. Mm -hmm. Yes. All okay. right. Yes. Now, from a farmer perspective. Yes. When you're talking about the green energy solutions, kindly yes. break down for us the various options that you, I know you've mentioned one or two, but we'd like to hear are there more in the space of green energy options for a farmer? Uh, there are several uh, available energy solutions for a farmer, but uh, typically, as you introduced me, I represent a people who are uh, dealing with biogas technology. And uh, possibly I will want, I would like to also uh, get deeper into this because uh, most farmers they are doing both the dairy and uh, crops, and uh, biogas comes as an in between, a bridging between dairy and the crop production. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, when we talk about green energy solution for normal domestic farmer, we are talking about an energy that the farmer does not really need to deplete or does not really harm the environment. And one very good example is biogas technology, where a farmer actually in the process of getting your milk, you also get energy to be used in all the productive uh, parts of your agriculture. Mm -hmm. To regele bado popopo tope chujio au biogas, uh, umezungumza tuangalie kwa undane kuhusiana na tabia nchi. Yes. Si, si kwa mkulima, lakini sasa kuangazia kwa climate change. Yes. Inasaidia vipi tafauti na namna tunajua. Uh, wacha nijaribu kiswa hili kidogo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Biogas, wakati mtu wameweka biogas, unajua kawahida mkulima yeyote anayemit ana ile kitu inaitwa carbon dioxide. So by the fact that uh, uh, an emit carbon dioxide na bado gas ambayo inaitwa methane ambayo ni more dangerous kushinda hata biogas yenyewe kushinda hata carbon dioxide yenyewe. So wakati mtu amejenga mtambo ya biogasi ama biogesi then anapata ku contain ama ku capture hiyo methane na hiyo methane uki capture alafu unaichoma inakupatia energy ya kupika energy ya ku run generators energy ya kufanya vitu mingi sana ndani ya boma na ukiwa hauna biogas inamaanisha ya kwamba hii methane bado ingeenda kuzuru ama kudhuru uh, the ozone layer mm -hmm. yes how is how easy is it for a farmer pengine akona kama ngombe wawili yes. all right yes. to set up a biogas structure what are the requirements because we are looking at a farmer who's established and also we are looking at a farmer who's starting up as a young person and they're interested in the conversation of biogas and also does the intensity of the gas depend on the number of you know animals you have uh, yes uh, let me start with your last question because it is easy mm -hmm. uh, the amount of gas is dependent on the amount of dung available mm -hmm. because uh, the more the dung the more the gas that you are able to produce uh, again any farmer who has uh, at least 30 kg of dung mm -hmm. is able to generate gas to be used in the domestic household mm -hmm. 
that is for cooking and lighting. So if you are a farmer and you have at least two animals, then you are my candidate. You are a candidate to actually install a biogas system in your place. And you will be able to do the cooking without any problem. Uh, the only challenge uh, that has been in the past is that we've been having uh, very few technicians, very few artisans who have been doing biogas technology. But currently we do have a very vast number of uh, biogas artisans who are able to give quality uh, products out there. So yes, uh, anybody with the two or three animals, you are able to do a biogas plant without any problem. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Ina furaisha kweli kweli namna unafafanua hilo. Kuna mtu mbaya anajua sana kwamba biogas mm. kazi yake tu ni kupishi. Yes. Je, kuna mambo mengine ambayo yanaweza kusaidia wa kutokana na biogas? Uh, ni ukweli ukiwa na biogas ume generate biogas. Biogas ni kama fuel, ni kama petroli. Mm -hmm. Ukiwa na petroli unaweza weka kwa pikipiki uendeshe pikipiki. Ukiwa na petroli unaweza weka kwa chafkata au run chafkata. Mm -hmm. So when you generate biogas it is actually a fuel which the main component is actually methane. Na ukiwa na hiyo methane then you can decide I am going to use it in cooking. I am going to use it in running a machine, which that means you install uh, a generator which runs on, on, uh, on, on, on the biogas itself. Mm -hmm. So there are several things that can be used, and I think uh, it is good that we clear here that uh, most farmers know biogas as only a source for cooking. Yes, biogas is for cooking, but biogas can be used for lighting. Biogas can be used to run chaff cutters. And I know most farmers are, are actually paying very hefty, uh, very, very, very high prices of uh, electricity in terms of running their chaff cutters. Once you have a biogas plant, you can actually use the biogas plant to run your chaff cutter. Mm -hmm. Apopo, yes. unafanya aje ndo yendele ku run hiyo shafukata umesema? Uh, shafukata uh, is, a, is a very simple thing and uh, most of the shafukatas either they are running on gasoline or some of them are running on electricity. So what we do, uh, they, are, they, are, they are generators that are actually meant to use biogas. They are generators that are meant to use natural gas. They are generators that are meant to use LPG. All this, of course, we have technicians and artisans all over that can, are able to modify. Uh, we just change the, 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 the system where the, the, the fuel system, the fuel type. So we just change the carburetor so that it is able to absorb the, 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 the gas itself and combust the gas to give you energy. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. Now, what are some of the safety precautions you need to have in mind when handling biogas? Uh, biogas, unlike propane, you know, LPG is generally propane, uh, which is uh, heavier than air. So once propane leaks in the house, then of course it displaces air. Mm -hmm. But methane is lighter than air, so it will always go up, so you will not really have a lot of effect in terms of uh, uh, kulipuka and all of that. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we say in my place, don't try this at home. It is combustible, mm -hmm. it is dangerous, so please uh, make sure that it is always contained. Now, one of the things that we advise the farmers is that make sure that your biogas plant is not leaking. That is the first precaution. Make sure your system is not leaking. And uh, of course, apart from the fact that it, it is hazardous to the environment, it is also hazardous to you because you are inhaling that gas it is itself. So you should make sure that uh, the plant is uh, not leaking at any point. And uh, the farmers who are very good at releasing the gas because it is now like free gas. So free gas people can just misuse. But I would like to advise farmers, please make sure that your gas is not leaking or it is not released to the environment. Mm -hmm. That is one of the precautions. Uh, number two, there are several models that are available in the market. There are prefabricated uh, systems and uh, there are masonry systems. There are systems that, uh, of course, uh, you must actually hood or protect where the, the plants are so that they are able to, uh, they, they, you don't have interferences from other uh, animals and other environmental factors. So those are the precautions that somebody must make 
for your biogas plant to actually serve you well. Umetamka kuhusu aina ya biogas. Yes. Sasa gani ndo mzuri zaidi kwa yule mkulima ambaye anakutazama sasa hivi achukue gani? Uh, we unauliza swali ngumu kwa sababu nikijipigia debe <laughs> mimi na, 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 na represent as i said i represent a number of uh, uh, contractors and a number of fabricators and a number of people who are doing uh, uh, different models yeah. but allow me to say that uh, each have his own unique advantages and each has his own unique disadvantages now if we start with the prefabricated one of the advantages is that uh, you are able to get a loan very fast because once uh, it is it can be used like a, as a collateral so that if you default somebody can just come and pick it up and then you uh, are you, 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 you are done with your loan uh, for masonry it is constructed underground no bank will be able to carry that so you cannot get funding to do a masonry digester in terms of a loan so that's advantage that uh, these uh, uh, prefabricated systems have uh, of course there are people who are not permanent in their place and so if you're not permanent in your place, so you cannot really do a mason digester because once you, uh, you, you want to leave that place to another region, mm -hmm. then you cannot move the system. Mm -hmm. So in terms of those contexts, the prefabricated are actually the best. Uh, masonry is uh, uh, also advantageous in a number of ways. One, it is completely underground, so you can do a number of things on top of it. I know in Kiambu where people construct houses on top of it, even chicken houses and all that cow shed on top of a biogas plant, so it conserves space. Uh, again, number two, you, you can maneuver the sizes. You can move from, the, the, there are several variety of sizes available depending on the amount of dung. Of course, the ones that come from factory, they prefabricated, they come with one fixed size. So if it is a four, you can only do a four. But for these ones, you can actually do a variety of sizes. Mm -hmm. So yes, they, they are different models, different advantages, depending on the client that you get. Uh -huh. In terms of production? In terms of production, per cubic meter of installed capacity is nearly the same. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. yes. Now I know you offer a lot of training yes. also to technicians yes. and anyone interested in biogas will be coming to that to yes. understand how you do it. But yes. looking at the Kenya school curriculum, do you yes. feel like it is sufficiently equipped when it comes to training and teaching young people on matters renewable energy and what more can be done? Uh, I think uh, the Kenyan curriculum uh, over the past few years, we've seen a lot of development in terms of uh, changing people towards uh, making sure that people are able to do uh, easy kazis amkono and they are able to earn a living from uh, the skills that they gather. Mm -hmm. uh, if I narrow down to specific biogas, I think uh, currently we have already developed a curriculum for training biogas artisans together with the NITA, National Industrial Training Authority. And uh, we have been rolling this, or we will be rolling this in a few uh, months, I think, uh, so that at least even the TVETs, even the, 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 the training institutions are able now to roll out and get people who are able to do biogas digesters. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, what we have had, I think there was nothing. But uh, we, we did not stop at nothing. At least right now, there are a number of things happening. Even a number of institutions are take, taking up biogas technology uh, and other renewable energies, not only biogas, in terms of developing a curriculum, a curriculum, developing content, absorbing students to make sure that at least people are using these technologies. Okay. Yes. Unavo zungumza hivyo ni kama kwamba unajaribu kusema kwamba ukulima sasa ndo tunakoelekea kwa kimasomo. Uh, when I was growing up, people used to think that uh, ukulima ilikuwa ni ya waze, wale ambao wa mm -hmm. But I think uh, ukulima is the end game as we speak now. Especially if you are able to decide that I am going into ukulima to make profit. This is the end game. And uh, for me, for, uh, for contractors, this is also where we are get getting towards. Because we know that for somebody to get 
every advantage that you can gather from a farm, you must adopt some of these clean and sustainable technologies in your farm. So yes, ukulima ni mamboyote. In the next 10, five years, in the next five to 10 years, I think most of the young people will be going into agriculture. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, as we speak, uh, our, most of our clients are people who are getting into agribusiness because they know that this is part and parcel of infrastructure mm -hmm. that they must have. Mm -hmm. For older farmers, they think that uh, this is something that I can think of, but for somebody who is in agribusiness, he sees biogas as a part and parcel of the infrastructure for, of, of that agribusiness. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes. Now we've, talking, we've talked about the advantages of using biogas yes. and how good it is for the environment. Yes. However, the practice has not yet been fully exploited in yes. Kenya. Yes. What would you say are the major challenges in biogas adoption in the country? Uh, kuna challenges kada. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but, but, the, but the main ones, I think uh, one is awareness. Most of the farmers are not aware of uh, the importance or the significance of this technology. And uh, that is why forums like this actually helps to enlighten the farmers and they can know that yes, biogas is supposed to be a part of my infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, so awareness is one of the challenges. Uh, the second challenge is actually the issue of capital. Biogas, uh, putting up any renewable source of energy or any source of energy is always capital intensive. And as we said, uh, some of the models that we are doing are not uh, bankable. So somebody cannot use that technology as a collateral in a way. Mm -hmm. So the cost implication of the capital uh, of, of, of investment that somebody has to make in the system is always something that uh, makes the farmers to shy away. Uh, number three is the issue of quality. Uh, I think over the first uh, seven to 10 years, we have been grumbling with the issues of quality because we did not have technicians who are capable of delivering quality biogas systems. So we were having a phase where people were still learning in the process and some of them, there are farmers who decided that I'm not going to invest in this technology alone because of the past experience of the neighbor farmer and all that. So quality was an issue by that time. But I think as we speak right now, uh, we must give a lot of uh, uh, congratulation to a number of stakeholders who have been investing in the people, investing in the, uh, the contractors, investing in the artisans and masons so that they can get to a level where the quality of systems that they produce is actually up to par. Asante mm -hmm. sana. Yes. Unafuna kazi nzuri kwa kueleza kwa undani kabisa kama unendelea kufuatilia Kenya's Gold. Tunazungumzia tope chujio au kipenda biogas hapa. Kuna menge. Usitake kuenda popote lakini sasa tuendekarika mafumzi kukidunya.